Does the universe have memory? Now, this is the topic that people are debating at the moment because it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it might not be as ridiculous as you might think. The concept of gravitational memory has a good theoretical foundation and in principle could be detected. But this concept relies on gravitational waves, which to be honest with you, just 10 years ago, I did not believe existed. Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and today we're talking about gravitational waves. So 10 years ago, as a PhD student at the University of Birmingham, which is now home to the Institute of Gravitational Wave Astronomy, I would laugh at the thought of my colleagues and peers thinking that they could detect gravitational waves. You see, gravitational waves, which are these ripples in the fabric of space-time, were predicted by Einstein as far back as 1916 as a consequence of his general theory of relativity. Now, according to Einstein, gravity isn't a force, but instead simply the warping of space-time due to mass and energy. This warping moves with the mass, but certain motions like the in-spiral and merger of two massive objects could create ripples of waves to emanate out from that source of the merger at the speed of light just like the ripples that you see on the surface of water when you drop a stone in a pond. Unfortunately, Einstein deemed that these waves were impossible to detect. The signal would just be too small. So how do we detect something like this? Well, you build a giant Michelson interferometer, a giant laser beam split into two and sent perpendicular to each other. These lasers will reflect off a mirror back to the detector where they were emitted and the arms of the lasers are exactly the same length. So you would expect that the laser to come back at exactly the same time and cancel each other out. But if you have a gravitational wave passing through, for example, because two black holes have just merged together, as the wave moves, it periodically distorts the fabric of space-time. This distortion is like a ripple with a characteristic quadrupole pattern. This means that as the wave passes through, it stretches space in one direction and simultaneously squeezes it in the perpendicular direction. Now, half a cycle later, the effect reverses. So with the laser interferometer, because space is stretched one way and squished the other, the distance traveled by one laser will be reduced and the other would be increased, creating a time delay in the reflected signal. When the beams recombine, they're slightly out of phase and this produces a signal that can be detected. The gravitational wave strain, a dimensionless quantity that represents the strength of the gravitational wave, is given by h equals delta l over l, where delta l is the change in distance and l is the length of the interferometer arm. So the bigger the strain h, the stronger the gravitational wave that you have. For a typical strain of 10 to the minus 21, you can easily see that in order to get a bigger change in distance, you need a longer interferometer arm. Now, this is where LIGO comes in. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, consists of two observatories, one in Livingston, Louisiana, and the other in Hanford, Washington. Each of the interferometers has a pair of long perpendicular arms that are four kilometers long. But even with this immense length, the change in distance that they measure is less than one thousandth the diameter of a proton. Now this is extremely small and it makes it incredibly vulnerable to all kinds of background noise. Even the smallest tremor, say from a person walking or even planes flying overhead, would create a disturbance that is far larger than the gravitational wave itself. This is why it's so hard to measure. It sounds impossible, right? 
So to deal with this, LIGO suspends its mirrors with multi-stage pendulums, each stage filtering out higher frequency ground motion. And these are mounted on active seismic isolation platforms that sense and counteract vibrations in real time. Additionally, the entire four kilometer arms are in one of the world's most pristine vacuums to prevent sound waves from traveling through the air and vibrating the mirrors themselves and to prevent the laser light from being scattered by air molecules. It's also the reason that they built two detectors 3000 kilometers apart, because if the signal was real, then they should see it in both detectors. Now, it wasn't until almost a century later, after Einstein made his predictions before the first direct observation of gravitational waves was made. This was in 2015 using the LIGO detectors. The signal detected was from two black holes colliding over a billion years ago. And since then, countless more of these events have been discovered. Just take a listen. So we've gone to all this trouble to build these massive sensitive detectors to pick up these tiny ripples. But why? The simple answer is that gravitational waves gives us a completely new way to see the universe. All of our previous astronomical observations relied on electromagnetic radiation. So this is like light, radio waves, x-rays, etc. But a lot of the most extreme events in the universe, like black hole mergers, well, black holes don't emit any light. Gravitational waves, on the other hand, are the only direct way that we can learn about them. By studying gravitational waves, we're essentially listening to the universe's most violent events. And this gives us insights into not only black holes, but the behavior of neutron stars and maybe even the very first moments after the Big Bang. We expect a huge gravitational wave from then. Now, while LIGO has been revolutionary, it's limited in what it can see. It's really good at detecting high frequency gravitational waves from events like stellar mass black holes and neutron star mergers. But to see the really big stuff, like supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies merging, then we need to look for lower frequency waves. And for that, we need a detector in space. Now, this is where the European Space Agency's Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, LISA, comes in. Instead of having a four kilometer arm on Earth, LISA will consist of three spacecraft in space orbiting in a triangular formation with each arm of the interferometer being a staggering 2.5 million kilometers long. This massive size will make LISA sensitive to the low frequency gravitational waves produced by the mergers of supermassive black holes. Now, this is the next step in gravitational wave astronomy. It's scheduled to launch in the 2030s. And that brings us back to our original question, does the universe have memory? The concept of gravitational wave memory suggests that a very strong sudden burst of gravitational waves from an event like a black hole merger could permanently distort space-time. But more on that next time. Anyway, that is all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. You can also join the community in the link below, but if not, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.